Today we're taking a look at the Anker Solix F2000, formerly the Powerhouse 767. I've actually had this thing for about four months now and I've had an excellent time with it. Anker was kind enough to sponsor this week's video as well, so I thought it would be a perfect time to share, you know, kind of a longer term hands-on review of using this and why I think it's probably the best power generator on the market right now. Getting into some of the specs, this has a 2048 watt hour capacity, but it is actually expandable up to 4096 watt hours with the Solix BP2000. I did actually pick that up new for this video, so I'll be sharing my experience with that in a little bit. You have 12 total output ports on the unit. You have four AC ports, three USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, and two 12 volt aux car ports, as well as a TT30 port for RV usage. You have a total of 2400 watts of AC output with a 3600 watt surge so it can handle just about anything that you want to plug into it. You know, major appliances, TVs, video game consoles. The charging speed is absolutely insane. It'll charge up to 1440 watts for the AC input. That'll get you to 80% in one hour. You also have the option of using solar panels with this. I don't have them personally but you can charge up to a thousand watts with solar. Using the F2000 for the past four months has been nothing short of excellent. I haven't had any hiccups or issues. This thing has been able to handle just about everything I've thrown at it. If you've never really looked into or tried a power station before, there are so many great use cases and just a range of scenarios that it is excellent for. You know, first and foremost, power outages. If that's something you've had to deal with before, you know it is a giant pain. I used to have these multi-day blackouts when I was a teenager and being you know, a tech nerd, that just wants to sit around and play video games huge problem uh, this will handle just about anything you want to plug into it whether it's like major appliances if you want to cook something with a toaster oven plug in your fridge to keep your food from spoiling you know all of the big important stuff like that but i also wanted to showcase and share some sort of more fun scenarios you know, for some peace of mind when the power was out. Running under 500 watts, this was able to power my entire desk setup, which isn't just a normal desk. You know, I have my main computer as well as my big, you know, OLED TV monitor, but I have hard drives and speakers. I also was running my Xbox along with it as well. It was able to handle all of that with a ton of headroom. I also moved this out into my living room and did some stress tests there. I was able to plug in my whole entertainment center. My entertainment center is not a normal person's entertainment center. It's kind of the whole tech media hub of my apartment. You know, I have my server computer out there as well as hard drives and networking equipment. You know, my TV, of course, Apple TV, lighting. I have my Xbox running as well almost 2000 watts of headroom after running all of that. Uh, I tried to plug in my toaster oven, was able to make some stuff with my toaster oven. Forgive that's probably a little bit dirty in those B-roll shots, but I was able to plug that in as well as an electric kettle. Um, just tons of scenarios for power outages. You're pretty much covered with a ton of different things if you wanna have this around just as a backup, just in case. But outside of you know the emergency scenario is where the fun really starts um, time of year right now you can plug in Christmas lights or outdoor Christmas decorations things like that it'll run those super smoothly but I really like it for camping and overlanding being able to run things like an electric cooler or refrigerator a CPAP machine you know if you travel with an e-bike you can charge up your e-bike charge up cameras things like that and if you're not a car or tent camper like I am the TT30 port here can run your RV which is great I always tend to prefer to camp on public land as opposed to campgrounds. One, you get a lot more privacy. Two, it's usually a lot better scenery. This kind of gives you a bit more freedom to save some money from electric cookups, but you also get much better campsites. Uh, that is exclusively how I camp when I'm with my car, if I'm not backpacking. Similarly, if you have any kind of off-grid cabin or vacation home, you know, I grew up in Michigan, everyone goes up north for the year. And if you're lucky, you have a cabin up there that you get to go to every year. You know, this could probably run the entire cabin for you. The last last main area I wanted to discuss aside from emergency situations and camping type of stuff is professional work. Now, if you use a lot of power tools and things on the job, this can handle and power that. Uh, for me personally,
personally, a lot of photo and video work, being able to plug in lighting equipment and cameras and everything into this is a real lifesaver. I've run into a ton of problems over the years doing outdoor video shoots, not knowing where the plugs are. You, know, you can bring extension cables, but you just never really know. And having that uncertainty is a huge no if you're a professional, you know, providing quality video for someone. All of this can run through the controls on the front, but there is also an integrated smart app that you can use that is shockingly great. Um, I've been using it for months now and it is super smooth, which can rarely be said for kind of dedicated apps like this. It gives you a lot more control and gives you a lot more control remotely as well if you wanna be able to handle the power management without having to get up and fiddle and mess with this. On top of the obvious charging, there are also a few other external features here I wanted to take a minute to cover. You have a built-in ambient light at the top that has three different levels. Really nice if you're trying to see in the dark while you're camping or have a power outage. Uh, it's pretty bright and definitely a nice added addition. The display screen is pretty large. It's also really bright and sharp. Nice to have. You can toggle it on and off as well if you want to save battery. On the bottom, you have some pretty large chunky wheels here. They're just under five inches in diameter. They have a bit of texture on the exterior too for off-road type of use. They work really well in my experience taking this out camping, you know, wheeling it through gravel and grass and things like that. On the flip side, on the top handle here, you have what's called an easy toe handle. It's almost like a luggage handle that pops out of the unit, makes it really nice to wheel it around and take it to places because, you know, it's a pretty large unit here with the bigger capacity model. I also really appreciate that the handle completely goes back into the unit so it's not protruding or getting in the way when it's not in use. A few things going on on the rear side of the unit. You have an AC plug so you can plug that in and get this charged up. You also have a solar panel plug there as well. I don't have the solar panels to test that out, but you can get up to a thousand watts charging if you want to go that route. You also have a circuit reset button and moving towards the bottom, you have the battery expansion slot. The cable for the battery expansion is pretty beefy. It's a twist lock. It feels really nice and satisfying. You know, it's not going to slip out when you're using the unit or anything like that. And it's a perfect segue to talk about the BP2000 battery expansion really quickly here. Like I'd mentioned, it doubles the capacity up to 4,096 watt hours. It's essentially, you know, the same battery from this unit, but a little bit smaller and more compact because you don't need the entire brain to control everything. You just plug it in, use it in conjunction with this, and they work essentially as one unit. I really appreciated how they handled charging with the expansion. The expansion battery will always be the first one to drain before it drains from the main unit and when you're charging the main unit is always going to be the one to charge up fully first that way you know, if you're using this for an extended period of time you don't want to have battery left in the expansion but have the main unit be dead so the way that they handled that is perfect and exactly what i'd hoped for if you watch all my videos, you know I've already talked about it before, but I can't stress just how good the overall build quality and fit and finish of this thing is. Uh, four months of usage now, and you know it looks great, it's held up really great, but more importantly, I've had zero issues. You know, Sometimes tech can get a little finicky or have problems or wonkiness. This thing has performed exactly as described every single time and i think that is a major plus when you're looking at something as important as a power backup for power outages and potentially a life or death sort of thing for a camping situation as well something else that can't be overlooked it uses lithium ion phosphate batteries which is kind of the gold standard for these power stations they're ev grade batteries they're rated for 3000 charge cycles anchor also has a five-year warranty on the unit itself which is great now, Anchor is known for their quality and reliability and dependability in this space, and they definitely do not disappoint here. Testing and using this the past few months has truly been a pleasure, you know, sponsored or not. I legitimately couldn't think of any sort of negative points or cons to this. It has been smooth sailing since day one with it. They're running some really great end of year holiday promotions right now on the Anchor Solix lineup with up to $1,500 off. The F2000 here is $600 off, so don't miss out. If you're interested in getting one, use the link in the description down below. Pick it up while it's on sale. Huge thanks to all of you for watching this week's video, though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.